What's up guys, Evan Jarvis here. In today's video, you are gonna learn the most important things to consider when choosing your bet size, why trying to play GTO is complete garbage in 95% of poker tournaments, and finally, how to use software like Flopzilla to fine tune your bet sizing skills and become your own best poker teacher. This is part two of a three part series, so if you haven't yet watched part one, I invite you to do so. I've placed the link in the video description, so you can just click that, watch that, and that way you'll get the most out of this lesson. When you're ready for some action keep on watching let's get stacking today's class is going to focus on bet sizing i like to work with bet sizing because most people do it without thinking if i change your thinking i will change your bet sizing generally let's start with a simple one you raise pre-flop on the button you are at the end of a tournament it's the tournament of your dreams you need to win this tournament all the money is at the top you raise on the button with 8-7 offsuit. Big blind calls. You get this board and he checks to you. And he's just a typical guy. Your opponent has been a somewhat passive American player. He's aggressive when he's in the lead, but that doesn't happen as much as it should. He's running 34-22 in this short stack duel. This board comes out. Let's start with something different. Now, there's a reason... With those quarterbacks, they ask you what is the most important thought because you were already going to a habit right there. But if you think about the most important thought, maybe you'll look at your habit a little differently, which you really need to do if you're going to level up here. What situation are you in here? You need to ask the right questions to get the right answers, guys. Identify the situation. All right, time is up. What is the most important thought when you're c-betting with nothing? You need to ask the right questions to get the right answers, guys. Identify the situation. Usually you just start with the biggest concept that you can find, the biggest thing that applies. It's just like you're building a pyramid. You wanna start with that big base. Don't, don't, work, don't reach for those small blocks at the top the thing is still gonna stand with that big base. You can work on the smaller points as you move up. So what is it? What is the most important thought when you're c-betting with nothing? What did he flat with? How often will he check raise me here? How do I balance my range here? Or will he fold high cards? I'm going to give you another 30 for this one. This one's kind of tough. All right, time is up. Okay, remember your answer here. The most important thought when you're c-betting with nothing is will he fold high cards? Watch the situation again. You get this board and he checks to you. What do you do here? When you saw this situation the first time, what was your first thought? What was your first bet? Now, what would you do? Okay, remember your answer. Okay, 
remember your answer, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you said half pot, that makes no sense to me. Remember this question? What is the most important thought when you're c-betting with nothing? Most people answer, most people answer, what did he flat with? But I don't think that thought helps you with the 14 seconds you have to think. How often will he check raise me here is a good thing to think of, but not the most important. If you can fold high cards and he's not check raising you, so D is more important than B. Also, people are generally bad at check raise bluffing, so it shouldn't be the first thing you think of. How do you balance your range is what many people discuss. They want to be GTO optimal. Well, let me ask you, how would you do that if you did want to do that? How, how would you balance? What percentage of the time should you be betting here with this hand? 50, 70, 90% of the time? What percentage of the time should you be betting one third, one half, two thirds? What percentage of the time should you be betting six, six? Half pot, third pot, two thirds pot? How about king queen, ace 10? See, this is my point. GTO is a way to play your range perfectly versus his range. Do you know what that means? It means you believe he's playing close to game theory optimal, so you're going to grasp at even better GTO, hoping he makes a minor variation. Guys, if you look at any database management tool, you're going to see that people play nowhere near game theory optimal. They're unbalanced, which means the style which will make you the most money will be unbalanced as well. An example. If you're playing against a rock, paper, scissors player who randomizes, then your best bet is to randomize as well, so he can exploit you. But if you see that he just keeps going for rock, then the best, best strategy is to just go paper. If you look at most databases, you'll see people are closer to the kid who keeps throwing rock because he loves throwing his fist. You won't see balanced players. Case in point, what is the most common c-bet size by far? It's half pot, right? How often does a half pot bet need to work as a complete bluff? 33% of the time, which means your opponent has to do something 66% of the time. If he was really trying not to not become exploitable and he was staying balanced, his fold would be somewhere near 33%. But look, on any database on earth, you will see this fold to flop C bet of 48.9% of the time. That is a huge overfold. So that would be right here. And this is just an example of a database, but you can pull any database on any network on earth or track any live casino and you'll see the same thing. People face half pot sized bets to play optimally. They would have to do something 66% of the time. They are nowhere near that. They're at 50% of the time. They're that kid who throws rock again and again because throwing their fist makes them feel powerful. And you're pretending there's some GTO destroyer because that's what we like to pretend. It makes our pursuit of poker feel more like a highfalutin enterprise. It makes us feel like we're not playing a card game. It feels more like chess. But chess, my friends, is knowledge. Poker is wisdom. And we have to be wise enough to know that most of our opponents are playing a style that features them folding too much. So you need to be betting more. If you bet half pot here, does he fold high cards? Does he fold ace 10? You don't know, right? Why would you invest in anything you don't know about? Do you wake up in the morning and put money in the Mexican stock market? No, because you don't know anything about the Bolsa Institucional de Valores, do you? So why would you put money in a half pot bet when you don't know if it's going to work? Betting 150% of the pot would honestly be a better answer. Before you guffaw at that, tell me, how often does a 150% of the pot size bet need to work? 
Off the top of your head, I don't want you to think. 33, 50, 55, 58, 60, 63, 66. If you don't know the answer, you probably shouldn't judge this bet. It's 63.63 repeating, by the way. Quick question. Have you ever called a 1.75x pot size bet in your life with a high card? If the answer is no, then someone who bets 175% can effectively exploit you. Look, this number at the bottom says 26.1%. That's the total of all the hands I marked for a filter, which here would be any pair, draw, or gut shot. Okay, so that's all these blue things here. I repeat, I'm counting gut shots in what he's playing here. But that's 26.1% of the time which means the guy doesn't even have a gut shot what percentage of the time? 73.9% of the time. Which means if he's folding over cards that don't have a gut shot, then the guy is folding 74% of the time, which is 11% more than you needed for a 175% pot size bet. For more for fun numbers, look at the sections I circled in green. He has overcards 83.4% of the time. If you want to know the ultimate way to make bet sizing easy, put your opponent's calling ranges in Flopzilla, put out the board, and take a look at what he has and ask yourself what bet will fold it out. And the way you find out whether your bet works or not is you take the amount you're betting divided by the pot you're going to win if he folds. So if you bet 100 into 100, you do not divide 100 by 100, you divide 100 by 200. Split Suit made a video, a wonderful video years and years ago, alluding to this when I was just trying to figure out how to play, how to play with Flopzilla the first time, and it helped me so much. And I'm gonna show you some of the trick bets it helped me develop, but if you're doing this kind of work, which should be really fun if you're really into poker, because it's really fun visualizing the bets and how your opponent's going to react to it, and then seeing it work in the field, watching the dumbfounded look or the, the guy not knowing what to say to you, that should give you a little bit of a heroin high. Really think that. Let, let me show you some of the more fun ones. But let me say this before we go on. I win ugly. This is not advanced. This is not balance. This will not get you a win at the Poker Masters. It will help you win in poker tournaments 3.5K or below. Cash games 2.5 or below outside of Vegas or anywhere with weak competition. I refer to this as the journeyman style. I am not the smartest poker coach. I am not the best poker player. I will not get you into high stakes games but I will teach you how to smash most competition because they have imbalances you can exploit. You yourself have imbalances you that I could exploit in you. If you have never looked at a 175% pot bet and said, I gotta call this with a high card, you are being exploited. And there are hundreds of variations of that in poker. Now, truthfully, only like 20, 30 of them come up all the time, but it becomes really fun to find all of them. But you need to be aware of what they are before you can use this style or not. There's two styles you should really look for. The Russians, I, I've been really lucky to work with some Russian players, and while I can't understand what the hell is going on half the time when we're teaching through my translators, what I have gathered is they have two words for a poker play. There's a balance and there's an exploit. The, both bets get expl they They have a couple different ways. They, they talk about value bet and bluff bet, but there's another way they categorize bets, which is balance or exploit. And they vary between those quite a bit, right? And a lot of the better Russian players are like, all I do is use exploitative play. That's it. That hasn't really come to the States nearly as much because... Our poker heroes are, well, guys like Doug Polk, and like Doug Polk is really good with the balancing stuff, right? So he talks about it a lot, and naturally, we all want to mimic it. But I found if you know about each style, the ex trying to exploit your opponents and also trying to balance, 
you can go between them depending on what your opponent's going to perceive. And I notice that most of the time when you're playing like a regular tournament, like guys, most of us play the same stakes of tournaments, right? Like when I'm in Vegas, I would much rather be playing a Planet Hollywood tournament than a Venetian tournament most days. Not that I couldn't get into a Venetian tournament, but because the Planet Hollywood tournament is much softer. And if you're playing 100, 200, 300, $500 buy-in, most of the guys you're going to be playing against you know, they're not studying GTO poker. They didn't know the answers to any of those questions as to what percentage of the pot they should be C betting, what percentage of the time. They play their cards and only their cards, and there's a way to exploit that because there's certain things humans don't like to do when they play poker. They don't like calling with high cards. They don't like folding pairs, etc. The journeyman style continued. The journeyman style, in my mind, is also much easier to learn. Our what I refer to as the journeyman style, the money ball poker approach. If you're going to learn balance and game theory, optimal poker, you would have done it by now. That's all anyone ever talks about. However, you'll probably remember for the rest of your life that your goal when you see bet with nothing is to, when you're see betting in nothing, what are you supposed, what are you doing? What are you trying to do? What is the most important thought? It's to fold out high cards. See how that works? It's pretty easy to remember. It's not easy to remember a specific spectrum of ranges and bet sizes versus another spectrum of ranges. This video has been brought to you by How to Think Like a Poker Player. I have a lot more information about this and how to think like a poker player. Guys, we looked through three situations in this video. The full product has 12 situations from poker games all over the world and it puts you under much more pressure. It really harps on my fundamentals, which are much different than what's in every poker training book. You will never play poker the same way again after you use this product. And that wraps up this part of the training series. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a lot from it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know how I'm doing. And if you learned something from this video, please let me know in the comments what your key takeaway or your biggest aha moment from watching this video was. I promise you, if you do that and then look at the other comments that are there, you're gonna learn a whole lot more. This is the beauty of YouTube. This is the beauty of community. This is how we grow as a team, by sharing our insights, reading what others' insights were, and engaging in discussion to further develop those thought processes. I really hope you're enjoying this learning series. And when you're ready to watch more training lessons like this one, feel free to check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash grips, or come by my website, www.grips.com, and join Team Grips for exclusive discounts, offers, and training opportunities. We got a whole lot of good ones coming on the way, and I hope that you are someone I will be getting to share them with. Let's get stacking. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it educational and entertaining. If you want to join Team Grips, click on that subscribe button and tap that bell to be notified every time a new video goes live. For behind the scenes updates and motivational quotes from my poker journey, follow me on Instagram. And when you're ready to take one step closer to becoming poker's next champion, click on me in three, two, one, and let's get stacking.